in this lecture i'm going to show you something that is very interesting see until now what we have looked at for the structures or members subjected to axial load that if you have the member and if you are you know pulling it or pushing it from the ends when we look at cross sections which are perpendicular to the longitudinal axis which we see that each of these elements are actually subjected to some kind of normal stresses right and consequent to that you have normal strains essentially expansion or contraction what we are going to see here in this particular lecture is that if for the same structure if you are looking at it slightly differently if you are looking at it at different angles you will see that in addition to these normal stresses which we had looked at we also start to develop some amount of shear stresses right and this is particularly becomes detrimental for structures which are weak in shear right so now going back to our topic we are going to look at stresses on inclined section so again reiterating what we had looked at before if we have this structure and if i'm pulling it or if i'm pushing it we had looked at these vertical sections wherever we have remember those cuts which we did while we're looking at the uniform axial or non-uniform axial load were all perpendicular to this longitudinal section and essentially the stresses you had were the simply the sigma x now what we are going to look at is that if in this structure you are cutting it at a different angle or a different plane then what are the kind of stresses that emerge right so this is what we have seen until now right so if, if we had a particular structure over here right where uh, we have taken an imaginary plane section m n over here right because of this one we have this stresses which is the sigma x straightforward we have we have a nicely uniform stress sigma x which is acting at the end wherever you are cutting this cross section and remember that delta equals to pl divided by a e where it happens at every individual section that gives you the total deformation right now if i look at this in 2d this is how it looks like again now within this if i take another you know tiny bit of a small element over here say a small element like this this you know if i blow this out of proportion it you know looks something like this where we have a sigma x p over a p over a and this is the same figure over here which is looking in the in the in the two dimensions right and this is what we have seen right so now i am posing you with a different problem i am posing you with the problem that for the same structure instead of taking this m n perpendicular to this longitudinal axis if i take it at a particular angle at a particular slope right then what happens to the stresses on this particular face if i take this instead of m n which is vertically down if i take this p q which is at an angle then what happens to these stresses which occur at this particular cross section over here right here we have seen we have this uniform sigma x equals to p over a only normal stresses and no shear stresses develop in this particular section right so if we are looking into this one over here it looks something like this see eventually even if you're cutting this section over here right if we have the leftward force p over here i'm going to have a balancing force p on this end as well i have to to maintain equilibrium because that plane is not going anywhere at the end that plane remains within that particular structure it only displaces slightly so the force must balance up right? so again if i look at this in this 2d and you have maybe this is the stress distribution and the resultant of this stress times the area of cross section over here uh, equals to this particular force p over here what we get so now you are probably wondering that hmm, now we have this particular force p now what are the kinds of stresses which which emanate you know or we generate in this particular uh, surface pq over here now some of you may have guessed it already so simply what probably we have to do is take this particular force p and maybe resolve it into two components maybe a normal component which is normal to this uh, phase pq right we have this phase pq so it is normal to this phase pq and a shear component v right now remember the normal acts of course from the name itself normal to that particular phase and the shear component acts at a particular angle now just to demonstrate that if this is my you know cross section at which I'm going to shear is acting like this right so it's it's on the on the surface it is like brushing against the surface the tangential kind of an action which it does which which we are which we know shear to do right so now if we look at it again so what we have over here that again reiterating and looking at the same structure we have this load p and we have cut this 
you know particular section over here which is pq right and this is my uh, normal which makes an angle of theta over here right so correspondingly as you can tell that this particular angle over here becomes 90 degrees minus theta right or pi over 2 minus theta over here right so now that we have this one and as we saw that in the previous uh, previous uh, slide that or the uh, that that we have this particular uh, force which eventually leads to this particular force p over here which has split it into this n the normal component which again acts about this particular uh, the, the normal to that plane at an angle of theta and we have the shear component v now so as you can tell that if this particular angle is theta my n becomes equals to p of cosine of theta right and v becomes p sine of theta simple right <coughs> excuse me now let's come back to this figure over here so here as you see that what i have essentially done that because of this normal force which is acting along that outward normal from that plane pq i have a normal stress so this stress over here is normal to this particular phase pq over here right now so how do i write this particular stress if i have to write it this particular stress is nothing but i'm going to call this as sigma theta is going to be equals to my normal force n divided by this cross sectional area the inclined cross sectional area. and what is the inclined cross sectional area if this angle was theta over here it is going to be a divided by cosine of theta now remember what was a a was nothing but this cross sectional area this cross sectional area is a right so if i am cutting that plane at a particular angle theta then the inclined plane has this particular area of cross section that is a divided by the cosine of theta so the here my sigma theta where sigma theta is this particular stress becomes equals to n divided by a1 right so if i have to you know sort of uh, simplify this or maybe expand this slightly more what i get is that my sigma theta is going to be i know that n is p cosine of theta right so i have p and a1 is a divided by cosine of theta so it is going to be p by a one of the cosine goes up cosine square of theta right because n is uh, p cosine of theta and a1 is a divided by cosine of theta that cosine goes up so it becomes p divided by a cosine square of theta right now remember what is p divided by a p is nothing but this particular force which is acting over here and a is the area of cross section which is perpendicular to the longitudinal axis which is essentially this one if i had the p and if i had the a i had p divided by a is nothing but this particular quantity which is sigma x right so the equation which i just derived over here i can you know replace p divided by a by sigma x over here so if i have to sort of simplify this even slightly bit further so i have that my sigma of theta is equals to p divided by a i am replacing with sigma x right also what i am doing i am going to pull a denominator 2 over here to make it 2 cosine square theta and i know 2 cosine square theta is 1 plus cosine of 2 theta right so p divided by a gets replaced by sigma x right and i divide by 2 so i have to multiply by 2 in the numerator so that means that becomes 2 cosine square of theta which i sort of expand this into 1 plus cosine of 2 theta right now let's look at this particular terminology or this particular formula which we just derived for sigma theta remember sigma theta is this particular stress which is acting normal to this inclined cross section right now let's see that at theta equals to zero now we are going to vary the angle and check and let's take one particular angle theta equals to zero so at say theta equals to zero 
what becomes to sigma theta sigma theta reaches its maximum value why because i know the maximum value of cosine 2 theta is 1 so cosine of 0 is 1 so at theta equals to 0 sigma theta becomes sigma max right so sigma max what i can write is that sigma max becomes equals to sigma x by 2 1 plus 1 so it is becomes equals to sigma x right now and what happens you know to uh, the and where does this happen that's the question not what where does this happen it happens at the point where as i said theta equals to 0 so what does theta equals to 0 mean theta equals to 0 means that this normal if you make this theta equals to 0 it essentially the horizontal line and this is exactly what we had seen that when we have this horizontal line over here suppose the outward normal is along this horizontal line then sigma x is p divided by a so your th sigma theta at theta equals to 0 becomes equals to sigma x and this is what we just derived so at theta equals to 0 sigma uh, max becomes equals to sigma x over here right okay so the maximum normal stress remember whenever you are cutting these inclined planes the maximum normal stress happens when theta equals to 0 that is when you are you know when your outward normal points exactly towards this particular force p or in other words the section that you have cut is exactly vertical or in this case exactly perpendicular to this longitudinal axis right now let's look at this guy over here here we know that this particular force which is acting is v which you know uh, generates this particular stress the shear stress tau over here so how can we write tau of theta so tau maybe let me change my color tau of theta becomes equals to same tau is also a stress so it is the force divided by the cross sectional area so that is v divided by a1 right so now if i have to again write this uh, you know a bit more further what i essentially get is that tau of theta v remember is p sine of theta right and i have a1 below so it is going to be and if i replace a1 by a divided by cosine of theta so it becomes p divided by a sine theta cosine of theta simple right again as i did before if i take p divided by a and replace that by sigma x and i pull a you know a two in the denominator i will have two sine theta cos theta in the you know in the numerator right which is sine of two theta so if i have to simplify this or expand this as i did previously what i will get is that my tau of theta becomes equals to sigma x over 2 sine of 2 theta right so now that i have this formula for uh, tau of theta right as you can tell that if this along which section does this become maximum right the maximum value of sine is 1 so that means 2 theta must be equals to pi over uh, 2 right uh, so that means your uh, theta becomes what theta becomes pi over 4 so that is at 45 degree angle so so here it is 0 degree so if i have at theta equals to 45 degrees right my tau max becomes equal to sigma x over 2 times sine of 90 that is 1 becomes equals to sigma x over 2 right so for these two quantities that sigma theta we have seen that sigma theta becomes maximum at theta equals to 0 over here now at theta equals to 0 what is the value of tau of theta let's put theta equals to 0 over here you will see tau of theta becomes equals to 0 which is obvious because when i was you know taking this particular section over here that at theta equals to 0 i did not have any shear on this particular phase i only had a normal stress right so again so at theta equals to 0 sigma max equals to sigma x and tau at theta equals to 0 degrees is equals to 0 right similarly 
if I take a look at the bottom one over here, right, at theta equals to at 45 degree, tau theta becomes equals to tau max equals to sigma x over 2, but does the normal stress vanish? Let's see. We have this generic formula for the sigma theta over here. So what happens to sigma theta at theta equals to 45 degrees? So if I have to write that sigma theta at theta equals to 45 degrees becomes equals to what? If I put 45 degrees over here, then it becomes cosine of 90, which becomes 0. So, tau, so, so, so sigma of theta equals to 45 degree becomes equals to sigma x over 2. So this is important, this particular relationship that you just saw, right, that if I am taking a cut at an angle of 45 degrees, for example, here, if suppose this theta over here, if this was 45 degrees over here, then this sigma theta will become equal, will become equal to sigma x over 2, right, and the tau of theta will also become sigma x over 2. So, and this has implications, we will see in a minute, this has some serious implications, right. So, this is one of the important form uh, relationships that we saw. And the other important relationship is, uh, you know, th this one over here, which we saw that at theta equals to 0, which is essentially you are cutting the plane, which is normal to the longitudinal axis over here, you have no shear stresses, you only have normal stresses, right. Now, so what we saw that within the same structure, within the same structure, if I am cutting the section, which is perpendicular to the longitudinal axis, I only have sigma x, no tau. And if I am cutting this at a 45 degree angle, then that face that I will have, that face will have an outward pointing normal sigma x, which is sigma x over 2 and a tau, which is going to be sigma x over 2 as well. And all of this, remember, is happening within the same structure. It just depends on how you are looking at it. So, just to reiterate, if I take this bar or which I was showing, maybe this sponge or this bar of a particular material, right? Now, let's take a look here. You have two elements, which is A and B, right? Now, if you take a look at element A over here, which is nothing but this one, right? Element A, you see, has been taken such that this particular face, right? The outward normal, makes an angle of theta equals to 0 with the horizontal, right? And for that, we have seen that the forces which we are going to have are simply going to be sigma x and sigma x, no tau, right? Whereas, in contrast, if you take a look at element B, which is cut at an angle of 45 degree, especially this particular face that you see over here, let me maybe mark this face. So, this n makes an angle of uh, theta equals to pi over 4, that is 45 degrees. So, essentially this particular face, right? What do we see? In this particular phase, I have a sigma x over 2 and I have a shear force, right? And the value of the shear force is going to be sigma x over 2. Now, here, I am only showing you for this particular, you know, cut section. So, if I take similar sections about this and about this, about the other faces, so if I take sections about, you know, this face or about this face or <coughs> about this face at different, you know, where the normal makes a different angles, you can put it back in the same formulas which we derived before, you can put it back essentially in these formulas over here and you will see that what you will get is that you will, you know, end up with these kinds of stresses, sigma x over 2 and this is going to be, uh, your, your sigma x outward normal will be sigma x over 2 and the tau will be sigma x over 2 as well, which we just saw. Whenever you take it as 45 degree, you know, you end up with these, you know, stresses, the normal stresses and the shear stresses, which are essentially, so this is my uh, element B, which I'm looking at, right? So, we end up with the sigma x and the, and the tau also sigma x over 2 equal, but the nature is completely opposite. One of them is a normal and one of them is a shear, right? Okay. Now that we have looked at it, now why did we learn this? What's the, what's the necessity for this, right? The necessity for this is that you have materials which are extremely strong in either tension or compression, but beyond a particular point, they are weak in shear. So, if you take that particular material and if you are thinking that I am going to stretch it beyond, you know, any imaginable limit since because 
it is uh, say very strong in tension or very strong in compression you cannot assume that the material will not fail it fails if it is weak in shear if it is strong in tension or compression it will survive the pulling or the pushing force but if it is weak in shear it will fail along a different particular angle right let's look at a particular video to make this concept clear that uh, that what are the types of materials one of the classic examples of such a material is wood so the video which we are going to look at is a is a block of wood which is you know pressed vertically down and you will start to see that the failure plane the beyond a particular point happens at a 45 degree angle so let's take a look at that video now so what you see here is a block of wood which is being pressed from the top as well as the bottom right so as i will play this video you will see that initially due to this compressive forces from the top and the bottom some cracks will start to develop in the middle but look at the failure pattern at the what angle it eventually fails so let's take a look at this video right so you see because of the normal forces you are have starting to have a little bit of cracks in between but after a while you see the failure pattern starts to emerge along this 45 degree angle on both the sides why because wood is substantially weak in shear right so essentially the after a while the shear failure starts to happen at those 45 degree angles right you have similar other kind of members you have similar uh, other kinds of materials as well which are quite strong in tension and quite strong in compression as long as you are looking at you know the cross section which is um, perpendicular to the longitudinal axis but these elements can also be weak in shear and what happens in such cases is that you start to have failure along that 45 degree plane so overall i hope that you have uh, you know enjoyed this particular topic while we looked at the normal stresses uh, and different cases for example the case in which have a uniform axial load along the uh, longitudinal axis we had the non-uniform axial load for example for the in the same member uh, yeah, the the axial load is different at the different points you have members which are varying in cross section and in the end what we looked at was uh, for the structure instead of looking instead of traditionally quote unquote traditionally looking at sections which are perpendicular to the longitudinal axis if you're looking at sections which are inclined at different angles to the longitudinal axis in addition to the normal stress sigma x we are also going to have some amount of shear stresses as well